My earliest memory of reading and literature comes from the ripe old age of three, when I would curl up next to my sister on the couch, mostly observing, while she would read books provided by her school. Yeah, you know the ones. I was granted the opportunity of reading and defining the words that she couldn't allowed in the hopes of her gaining comprehension. This marked the beginning of my perpetual obsession with literature. I was, in my mother's words, not my own, a ravenous beast of a reader. The seemingly effortless way an author could string these prepossessing words into a captivating sentence would forever boggle my mind, for I didn't always comprehend these intellectually stimulating words, and this talent wasn't something that I naturally possessed. Over the years, my captivation with certain aspects of literature has changed. Paradigmatically, as a kid, I valued adventure with gripping resolution. However, in recent years, I find myself gravitating towards pieces, flaunting intricate details, and presenting intriguing ideas. Throughout these years and changes in interest, one often overlooked part of literature has held a place near and dear to my heart, especially latterly as I'm going to realize it's become a bit of a lost art. The device I'm speaking so highly of? Synonyms. The entire idea that it takes just one to change the complete tone of a sentence has and will continue to immeasurably comfort and impress me. To reiterate my point, these are grossly underused in recurrent writing. So at this moment, you're probably thinking one of two things. The first of which being, how can this impact someone to, on such a large scale that they write an entire TED talk about it? Or two, how can I apply this to my life or have this have a big impact on me as a person? So in order to answer those questions, I am going to look at an example. So for this example, we'll think of love. What comes to mind when you think of love? For time's sake, I'll say someone you value or idealize. Okay, that's cool. But I want to further develop the entire word, have it cater to a specific idea or meaning. So think of that guy or chick you say you're currently in love with. And if you're like me and you think everybody's ew, just try to picture the general concept. Now, let's replace in love with deeply infatuated by. The sentence now states, I'm deeply infatuated by so-and-so. Love is a bit of a broad subject, so by using a more specific synonym, it indisputably gave the entire sentence a much more beautifully rich meaning. The best part has yet to come, so prepare yourself. This applies to almost any case involving literature. That's one of the main reasons I'm so mind-boggled by the fact that synonyms often go unused. They're so simplistic and terms of usage it's genuinely as elementary as looking at a sentence and realizing that you could be additionally explanative. So you replace a word or two and it constructively redefines the entire thing. In an introspective sort of way, it's beautiful really. I recently conducted a study consisting of three questions. As I was leafing through the answers provided by the constituents, I noticed a particular pattern. 86% of respondents agreed that having an expansive vocabulary was, in fact, an entirely salient asset, but themselves hardly used a dictionary. These results were contradictory and objectionable at best. Okay, that was an audacious exaggeration. However, the point still stands. How is one going to value unusual vocabulary, yet not utilize the one device whose entire purpose is to support that? It makes no sense. While writing, oftentimes us as a populace fall into a pattern of reusing the same commonplace vocabulary in every piece you create to the point that you either lose passion or your writing becomes somewhat of a slave to monotony. One of, if not the, easiest ways to preclude this nationwide phenomenon is to engage in the usage of synonyms. Treat every comp or treat every composition as an opportunity to spread your intellectual wings.